Well, good day everybody. This is Chris of the Ancient Scholar and the time has come to do an extended review of the 2022 YT Izzo Modified Core 2. This is the extra large frame size. And so just like the eponymous and dare I say one of the greatest, if not the greatest, contemporary westerns ever produced, the good, the bad, and the ugly, well, Sergio Leone, I, I am going to follow that format, the good, the bad, and the ugly, but rather I'm going to follow it how it was initially presented in the movie, talking about the bad, the ugly, and the good. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I now have just over 500 miles of riding on this bike. And I think I'm at a point where I can at least uh, say something. I can opine just a bit with a modest degree of authority about uh, what my thoughts are on this bike. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So the bad. So the bad are things that are not necessarily showstoppers. And they may be very well subjective and may not necessarily be problematic for some people. Uh, so though that is what I mean by the bad, quote unquote. So, let's talk about some of the things that were minor annoyances or issues with me. Uh, so, first and foremost uh, were the tires. The tires that came stock with this were the Maxxis Forecaster 29 by 2.35s. Uh, now, they were good in that they were very fast rolling. And, in fact, that really helped me when I had a mechanical issue on a, on a 10-hour endurance race uh, a couple weeks ago. I had a mechanical issue on my, my cross-country race bike, my Santa Cruz Blur, and I ended up having a transition to this and actually rode uh, about half the race on this bike. And it was very fast. Those tires are very fast, uh, the very low rolling resistance, and they're great for uh, groomed, more or less non-technical cross-country courses like the course that I was uh, riding at this 10 hour endurance race. It wasn't super technical, it was fast. It had uh, lots of short little creek crossings and not a whole lot of technical features. And so that was great. And the cross country feel that those tires brought were great. However, this is primarily a trail bike and that's primarily what I ride. And I find that when I ride more technical particularly backcountry trails like we run into out here in the Gila, um, those particular tires came up a little lacking as far as traction, uh, cornering, and just overall durability. I actually ended up punch puncturing those tires uh, on several occasions. Um, and I'm not even talking the sidewall tears. I'm talking actual straight on punctures from running over you know, baby heads and sharp rock and things like that. Uh, so I just didn't fi find that they... Uh, worked with the general kind of riding that I do with this bike and so I'm currently uh, trying to find a compromise and I'm running uh, the Maxxis Recons which are a little more aggressive uh, but uh, the particular Recons I'm running I'm running a 29 by 2.8 up front and a 29 by 2.6 <coughs> I mean um, 29 by a uh, 2.4, excuse me, 4 in the rear. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually running uh, fairly wide tires, uh, wide trail tires, extra volume uh, to modulate uh, the trail a little bit and to uh, allow for a little more compliance uh, to give me some uh, more traction and uh, hopefully a little more durability as well. Uh, so I'm just dialing those in. I actually just put those tires on this bike. This is my first ride. Uh, with these new tires so we'll see how how it works out and if i can strike a decent compromise uh, with rolling resistance traction durability i mean no, no tire is perfect and you're always having to compromise on something so we'll see how that goes uh, so that's one of the bads the second bad has to do with the drivetrain this actually originally this comes with the uh, sram nx drivetrain and I think if we're meeting certain price points, I, I completely understand why. And, and there are many companies that are now putting the NX, the 12 speed, uh, the 1x12 NX drivetrain on bikes that are frankly 
fairly highly priced. Uh, I've seen some Santa Cruz's that are you know selling four thousand dollar bikes with uh, a, an NX drivetrain, which is just rather befuddling to me. I I honestly I don't think that the NX is as consistently reliable and as nice shifting as say the GX. I think the GX is really the sweet spot as far as uh, SRAM drivetrains go, as far as uh, the the cost and the performance. Um, now, with that in mind, there are some, some positive aspects to that. The first positive aspect is that the, the NX uses the old uh, Shimano Hyperglider HG uh, driver which means that if you have a lot of older kit lying around, it's going to be compatible with that. But it's not going to be compatible with some of the newer systems and newer drivetrains that are out there. And so you are going to be much more limited if you want to do contemporary upgrades. You're going to have to uh, put. You're going to have to find an XD driver and put it on, um, and then uh, get a new cassette. Uh, however, I'm still running the original HD driver and the 12-speed NX cassette, and it actually, on this particular bike, it's actually run quite well. I am using a GX rear derailleur and GX shifter, and I'll talk about the chain here in a minute, because I did something very different with the chain, and it actually has been pretty reliable. I don't have any complaints, and so I'm just going to keep riding uh, the NX, or what NX components are left on this bike, and I'm just going to continue riding. I haven't had any issues, which has not been the case on other bikes that I've had that came with NX drivetrains. I've actually had quite a few issues, uh, particularly on uh, the Transition Sentinel. Uh, the NX drivetrain was uh, just just um, utterly useless after a few hundred miles. It, it was really, really difficult to work with. This particular NX drivetrain or the components that I have has has been virtually flawless. Uh, so that is a potential bad depending on uh, where you're coming from there. Uh, the chain, however, I believe this the the chain the original chain that came on this bike was probably the NX chain and it actually ended up stretching out after about 300 miles and I started having some shifting issues and I thought, oh here we go. Here we go again, same old uh, NX crap that I, shit that I have to deal with, that I've had to deal with. Uh, and then um, I found out the chain had really stretched and worn. I was like, wow. Uh, so what I ended up doing is uh, I ended up putting in XX1 chain. So I've got a mixture of XX1, NX, and GX. But putting this XX1 chain on has really fundamentally changed uh, the shifting. It's shifting wonderfully even even better than before and i have a chain that yes it costs more money it's about 90 bucks uh, for an xx1 chain but it's gonna last forever you know i have a, a, a i had an nx or a, an xx1 chain on my blur and i put uh well over a thousand miles on that chain and it was still hanging in there pretty decent when i changed it out it, it had it stretched and worn a little bit uh, but it hadn't gone completely through its life, and so I'm uh, so just the, the the performance and what you get for the cost, I think, is is much better going for a higher quality chain uh, because you can just get so so many more miles out of it, and you're not having to change it out. And if it stretches and you and you don't recognize that it's wearing, it can actually put additional stress on your other components. Uh, so I think that that was a worthwhile upgrade. Uh, so that is the bad as far as the drivetrain goes and the tires go. Uh, as far as everything else, I have no issues. Um, it has taken me a little while to dial the front and rear suspension in. I've had to work adding and taking pressure away and, and just kind of working with it. I've just had to work. It's not a hasn't been a set and forget kind of uh, setup. Um, it has taken me some time. Uh, unlike uh, like the, the, the blur was just... Uh, I just set you know 22% sag, and it was fine. Um, this has just been a little more more nuanced, but I'm getting there, and I don't have any complaints. Uh, the other major potential bad is uh, the brakes, are the brakes rather, and this runs the guy the G2 brakes, which is a successor to the guides, and. Um, 
it's it's a mixture. It's a superposition of of, of good and bad, quote unquote. In that, I've had no reliable ability issues with these brakes. Uh, they're still working fine. It's just they're a little anemic. They don't have the raw stopping power of the Shimano XTs that I'm used to running on my other bikes. Uh, but they mod, they feel good. The bite point is consistent, and they have been very reliable. And so I have been able to adapt and work around um, and just I recognize that I have to pull in a little harder and a little further down to get the the stopping power that I need in some cases. Uh, so that hasn't been as big of an issue, but it is a potential issue. Uh, as far as that goes, those are all the bads. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the ugly now. Uh, and there have been a couple of ugly things that I've run into. Uh, the ugliest thing that I run into actually happened last week, and that was the dropper post cable. Uh, so the dropper post cable actually snapped, and it was actually a video. I, re I just uploaded a video of, a, of an Easter. It was actually happened on Easter, an Easter ride. And coming back, so it was an out and back. It was a 24-mile out and back. And so on the way back, uh, about... Uh, five, six miles in. So I still had another five, another six or seven miles left. Um, the cable snapped and it didn't actually snap here where the, the cable comes out of the lever. It, it actually snapped right in here. Uh, just the weirdest thing. And um, I tried, I actually had a spare cable and I tried to do some on the trail uh, repair. And um, I had to pull the dropper out and then um, I noticed it was really difficult to move the housing in to pull the dropper up so I could pull the old cable and then thread a new cable in. Um, I was able to get the dropper out and then I was able to thread a cable through and then I was not able to, I was not able to uh, move the housing. The housing wouldn't move and I thread the cable in backwards to where the, um, where the little nub came out um, here, so the, the nub that normally connects into your dropper, I, I, I threaded in backwards where it came out here so I could pull on it. Um, I could pull on it and try to loosen the, uh, the housing up. It didn't work. I threaded through the other way. And then, um, so the, the, the nub was here. And so, um, I would pull on the cable and the nub would, it would, would hit the housing and I was trying to pull the housing back through and it wouldn't, I couldn't move it. Um, and so I was not able to complete the repair on the trail. So I just had to slam the dropper, uh, the post down as far as it would let me go and then ride on out. And, uh, as it turned out, uh, the housing somehow had, had kinked, uh, down around the bottom bracket. And uh, uh, I, it was just an absolute mess. I had to pull the bottom bracket off, manually thread. Uh, I did put new housing in. Uh, it was an absolute nightmare, honestly. <laughs> it was about as bad as the transition. Uh, my Sentinel is a, a utter pain in the ass when it comes to uh, putting in new housing because you, you, you have to just pull the bottom bracket out. Um, but the problem with this is it's a press fit bottom bracket. <laughs> And so it's, it's, in my opinion, it's a little harder to work with than a, than a threaded bottom bracket. So it was a real pain in the ass. Uh, I probably lost a couple of years of my life due to the, the cortisol that was being released as a, as a result of the stress uh, that it caused me. But uh, I, we did get things working. Um, but that was just kind of a weird, idiosyncratic thing. I've never had a cable snap uh, let alone snap in that uh, particular uh, area. And that was a cable that came with a bike stock. Um, I'm running an, a, a new one um, uh, that I bought aftermarket, obviously, and I'm running new housing as well, Jaguar. Uh, so hopefully that'll work better. Uh, so that was probably my biggest issue that I've had with this bike so far. And then let's move on to the good. Let's talk about the good now. So what are the good aspects of this bike? Well, this bike feels wonderful. It, it just fits me wonderfully. I love the extra large. Um, I love the reach on the bike. I love the geometry. It just feels good in a variety of conditions and a variety of terrain. Uh, I, I think it's just good. It's a very consistent riding. It's very predictable. The handling is very predictable. It's very composed and gentlemanly-like. 
And um, that gives me a lot of confidence because I know how it is going to react in certain types of terrain. And that really helps me um, modify my positioning, my riding style, my movement, and my pedaling. Um, and I can do that kind of on the fly because I do know um, how the bike feels. So I just love the way it feels. I love the way it rides. It's a very consistent, well-composed composed riding bike. Uh, and I love the way it looks. I just love the clean, sharp, crisp angles of the bike. Uh, so I, I, I really like the, the aesthetics of the bike. And so those are the two, as far as the good, the good aspects go, I just, I just, those are just two of the most positive things I can say about this uh, particular bike. Uh, and then one other ugly I forgot to mention, and I'll put this in the ugly category, is the, the, the mounting for the rear shock. So the compression is way down low, and so it's kind of hard to reach the, co the compression. So I find that it, when you're riding, you just kind of want to find a, a setting that works for you. Typically, I just ride it wide open, and then you just kind of ride it. It's not like the, my blur where the, the mounting is up high, and it's real easy just to reach under and flick that um, over uh, to tr the trail, wide open, or lockout mode. Um, with, with this bike, it's a little harder to do that uh, on the fly, at least. And, and I do know there are some aftermarket options, like the... Um, uh, the Owens TTX and the TTX2 uh, shocks, which uh, the lockout, the compression, uh, the compression rebound lever is actually on the top, and so it's a little easier to reach. Uh, but just from a stock configuration, that is something that you want to think about. But again, this is a trail bike, uh, so I'm not typically racing it. I did race it one, uh, do uh, it was my backup for a race, uh, so I'm not flipping that. Um, that uh, switch uh, quite frequently. Um, I just kind of find a, a place that works or I know if there's an extended downhill or an extended rough section, I'll keep it open. Or if I'm doing like uh, an extended climb on a, a road or fire road or something like that, maybe I'll put it in the middle setting. I don't find that I need to, to, to completely lock it out uh, very much, if at all, uh, just because again, I'm, I'm primarily riding this on trail. Okay, so those are my thoughts on the extended review of the YT Izzo, the good, the bad, the ugly, or rather the bad, the ugly, and the good. Uh, overall, I am absolutely satisfied with this bike. I'm happy with it. I love the way it feels and rides, and um, I can't wait to put another 500 miles on it. And I hope that you all have enjoyed the journey of the YT Izzo as much as I have. I feel like maybe I've been sleeping on some of these other brands that are at least in the area of the country where I live a bit more esoteric like Canyon and YT and um, I'm just new to the whole um, the whole consumer direct model and maybe I'll just do a separate video on the consumer direct experience because there are some good things to it and some uh, some bad things to it uh, that I would I would love to discuss and articulate, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this particular video. All right, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a great day, and I'm going to get out on the trail uh, and uh, try to get uh, the rest of this ride in before the winds pick up even more than they already have. All right, everyone, stay safe, have fun. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.